What is going on everybody, Boris here to Ecology Design Studio. Today we're going to delve into the world of Stata. Stata is a statistical software package that I highly recommend. It's not open source, GNU, it's not free. Uh, there's a little bit of an upfront investment with Stata, but if you work with statistics a lot, it's way but it's it's a whole new world um, from what we've been doing in previous videos with Excel and through a series of video tutorials i'm going to show you how i analyze data from the energy information administration the department of energy and the mine safety and health administration on energy security and diversity the main paper uh, can be found on our collegedesigns.com feed and there's a video version of that um, on the our youtube channel uh, the links uh, of all that is below in, a, in the video description so check those out if you have some time but right now, let's jump into uh, an introductory level one, basically, version of Stata, just some, some real basics. And what I'm going to do is I have the data here open. I'm going to make that available on, on the website. I have all this data. And you see this blank space here. That's going to be a problem later on. And I'm going to teach you how we can get rid of... Um, uh, basically, the Stata is going to replace these blank spaces with dots, and we don't want dots, we want zeros. So I'm going to show you how to replace those with zeros and how to work around errors or manipulating variables. But the first step is to import our data into Stata. So let's do that right now. We import our data by clicking Control A, uh, Control C to copy all of our data. There's multiple ways you can do this. Uh, basically with as, as with any statistical program whether you're using FL Studio or Stata or Microsoft Excel there's more than one way to do something uh, this is just the way I prefer to do it so control control a control C basically select all of your data copy it over head over into Stata and let's make that full screen and click this button right here it says data editor uh, it helps it allows you to edit your data so click on that and it's gonna open up it's gonna be blank obviously you know we have no variables in there and uh, click control V and this a little pop-up box is going to uh, show up and it's gonna say is the first row data or variable names I want my first row to be variable names I've already presets data and the first row uh, contains all my variable names kind of the way I want them not exactly the way I want them uh, but it's not data so we have two options here we can treat the first row as data or we can treat the first row as variable names and we want the second option we click that and all of our data is imported obviously the columns are too short um, the the units here are billions of BTU for the energy for natural gas crude oil the different forms of uh, energy and the different types of variables we have and as I said before Stata is going to replace blank cells with this dot and we're gonna sh see how we can fix that here in a second Okay, let's close this out. And the first thing we need to do is let's examine here our variables. We have year, average mining deaths, mining death um, cost, average injury. Uh, these variables here are basically coal produced, natural gas produced, crude oil, NGLP, that's natural gas, plant liquids, total fossil fuels, uh, total fossil energy produced, hyd uh, hydroelectric, geothermal, solar, wind, biomass, and renewable and nuclear. These are all the types of energy produced. The first type we're dealing is produced. And then here we have total uh, energy produced. Then we have total consumed, uh, net imports, fossil fuels consumed, coal consumed, renewables consumed. Uh, and then some other explanatory variables like US population, uh, the average CPI value for those years. And the period we're dealing with is between the years of 1949 and 2011 so we're dealing with time series data and the first thing we need to do is tell Stata that that's what we're doing let's head over to the command window here and type in TS set one one word and then year and press enter and then there it is time variable year 1949 to 2011 and one unit so now we've told Stata we're dealing with time series data and we need to keep in mind that that may lead to some uh, autocorrelation or multicollinearity between our between our variable. For now, let's do let's just do a very quick summary of our variable variables. Stata is very um, efficient at doing this. So just type in sum. You can type in summary or you can type in sum for short, and press enter. And there it is. All of our variables, we have the number of observations is always going to be 63 because we're dealing with 63 years, 1949, 2011. Our mean, standard deviation, our minimum, and our maximum. And as you can see, not all of them fit here on this uh, one screen. 
to see all of them click down here on the more button and it's going to expand out we have about 35 variables right now it says we're going to have way more than that by the time we're done uh, so let's let's run our first basic regression let's develop a model and run our first regression for first regression let's do something something simple so let's do reg for regression we can also type in regress but i like the, the shorthand uh, let's regress the total amount of fossil fuel produced so let's find that variable here uh, somewhere up top total fossil produced right here we can either double click it or we can click on this little arrow and that's going to be our dependent variable for independent variable let's get wind and solar wind and solar that's not the actual model by the way just as a caveat um, these are these variables are not in logarithmic format uh, they've not been processed they've not been changed uh, if we click on our data editor here we see that wind and solar have these dots which are going to throw everything off so i'm just taking you through the process of you know running a basic model refining it refining it and then finally getting to a solid model with um, variables properly specified and everything so basically a crawl walk run and right now we're in a crawl stage so total fossil fuels wind solar uh, let's check out what else do we need we want uh, we don't want total renewables because we have wind and solar and that includes that we want the environmental uh, dummy environmental categorical variable and to show you really quick let's go to the data editor and find our um, categorical variable or dummy variable let's take a look at just the first one for a second time embargo dummy that is has zeros for everything and ones for lines 24 to 32 why that's years 1972 to 1980s that's the period during which the OPEC embargo affected the United States so basically we exclude all other years we place zero that nullifies them and we place a one it doesn't really change anything but it includes them into the model so we include that variable um, it, it shows the coefficient and if it's statistically significant it's not going to come up as statistically significant I can tell you that right now uh, because none of our variables are properly specified let's press enter and see what happens uh, there it is uh, a bunch of variables omitted for collinearity we have a low f statistic low r squared uh, insignificant you know high, low probability here or high probability of uh, error and so on and so forth we see you know nothing is statistically significant none of our variables so this model is basically garbage uh, we don't want this model it, it does nothing uh, why do we do it is so we can learn how to do graphs and model specifications uh, or checking for model misspecification errors so let's predict our residuals and we do that by typing predict r or res comma r it's already defined okay i guess we already have that if you don't already have that go ahead and type that in uh, and then we uh, we can do a two-way line plot of residuals versus year and i'm doing this just to show you how to do line graphs or scatter graphs there it is that it pops it out a nice line graph of the variables let's close that and let's do a two-way scatter plot of res and then now we're going to do l dot res um, we want a lagged variable for residuals and state is going to do this automatically for us we don't already have to have a defined variable um, and this is what it looks like we have our regular model residuals 1949 to 2011 and it regresses against um, so for example 2011 will be regressed with the residuals of 2010 and so on and so forth uh, so let's close that out and that's it for for some line graphs again you can you can do it here through graphics you know pie chart dot chart uh, scatterplot matrix but i find it much easier to just um, learn the commands for it and then just go ahead and uh, type them out i did promise i'd show you how to get rid of those annoying little um, dots that stata creates uh, throwing your data off i've already done it for wind and solar the only one left is uh, geothermal i believe so let's go ahead and replace those to show you again what I'm talking about and click on the data editor up here and see the geothermal like wind and solar that used to be dots and what it does is it throws off your your data and your estimations uh, geothermal I haven't used that in my any of my regressions uh, that's why it hasn't been critical to replace it and I can show you now how we can uh, get rid of that in case you're interested in playing around with that variable so we do this by typing uh, replace uh, replace command geothermal equals zero if so it's a conditional if statement 
geothermal greater than or equal to a dot and then close parentheses and press enter and then we see here state is telling us that 11 real changes have been made uh, let's see what this looks like by clicking on that editor and voila lines 1 through lines 11 have been changed it used to be dots and now it's zeros for any data that you import into Stata that comes out looking like that from Excel. Uh, it's an easy fix. You can do it in Excel prior to importing. Uh, and if you don't catch it, and it's, not, it's no big deal. You can, uh, you can do it in Stata. Also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is it didn't do it this time. But sometimes when you import data from Excel into Stata, it's going to show up as red. And right now, everything is in black letters. Red means that it's a string character. And uh, Stata is not recognizing it as a number. So what you need to do is you need to go back into Excel, highlight all of your data, and uh, where it says uh, you know variable type or data type, it's, it says general or percent, you know, uh, all of that. Click on that down arrow, and from the list select number. Uh, you want all of your Excel data to be structured as numbers, and then you can go ahead and import into uh, into Stata. One way to get rid of old data in Stata is to type in uh, clear. Now we saw all the variables up there. We can type in clear and press enter. And that's it. All our variables are gone. Um, everything here in our uh, data, uh, variable editor, data editor is gone. And we can now import uh, new data. Now let's take a look at how we can add and delete variables. Adding variables is really simple, really easy. Uh, all, all we do is you go to the data editor and you copy basically you copy and paste your data from Excel just one column go to uh, the same data editor and then uh, control V or copy and paste in there uh, and then treat the first row as a variable name to delete a variable is simple as well just type in drop and then which variable do you want to drop let's do s coal drop s coal that easy and then that variable is now gone uh, if you go into the data editor you can verify that that variable no longer exists and what we need to do now is transform each and every variable into its logarithmic counterpart. I'm not gonna go through and do that. I'll, do, I'll, I'll pause the video and then do that. But to show you really quick, we're going to generate a new variable. So let's do coal. So let's generate um, ln lower dash coal. That's our variable name. And the ln just signifies that it's in a logarithmic format. Equals log parentheses col. Close parentheses. And we press enter. Now let's go into our uh, data editor. Scroll all the way over. And here it is. Ln col. Uh, the billions of BTU have been transformed into a logarithmic variable. And now we can work with that. So I'll take a few seconds and change all the variables into logarithmic. Or actually, I'll just import the finalized data set that I have. All right, so what I've done now is I've changed, as you see, there's far more variables here. Uh, I've changed a bunch of variables into their logarithmic form. There's other variables. This is my finalized data set that's going to be available on our website or collegedesigns.com slash feed. And I've ran a model. Uh, ignore that for a second. And let me show you how to recall a previous command. Just type page up or page down. If you type in page up, it, it goes up into your previous um, commands. So this is the one I ran. Um, did a regular regression, OLS, or nearly squares, logarithmic total fossil fuel produced in the United States, uh, our environmental categorical variable, our OPEC embargo categorical variable, a logarithmic of the US population, and a logarithmic of total renewables. So as you can see, every variable dependent and independent are in logarithmic form. This is a growth model. Let's go ahead and press enter and see uh, what we get. So we have our constant. Um, statistically significant at the alpha 0 0.01 highly statistically significant uh, total renewables is statistically significant alpha equals 0 0.05 population statistically significant at 0 0.01 uh, and the environmental dummy is statistically significant at alpha 0 0.05 the only one that's not significant is the embargo we have uh, a very low probability of that statistic we have a higher F statistic than previously um, we have a much higher R squared, 0 0.8093. Uh, just that R squared looks good, just 0.79, just a little less. And what that's telling us that is on average, holding everything else constant, this model explains about 80 uh, to 81% of observed variation in our variables. 
it's still not quite good enough. There's still a lot to do with this model. Uh, and in part two, we'll see how we can run uh, tests for heteroscedasticity, multicollinearity, autocollinearity, how we can correct for some of those things. Um, the different types of models we can run, uh, robust regressions, Cochrane R cut, Poisson distributions, um, new US distributions with lag variable. So join me in the next uh, session, part two. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in a little bit.